This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And this week, he's taking a look at the weapons from our recent poll winner, Titanfall 2. I'm looking right now at several 20mm cannon systems, and I can't really show you those very easily. However, I can show you this. Just. <laughs> and of course, make sure to subscribe for more of this kind of content on the channel, including Loadout, which takes an in-depth look at some of the most iconic firearms in gaming. Right, let's take a look at the weapons of Titanfall 2. All right, so this this thing looks at first glance like a short, compact, carbine assault rifle, if you, if you like, in terms of the size of the magazine well and what turns out to be the base plate of the magazine. But when in use, it is clearly a submachine gun. It's spitting out little pistol cases, nicely modeled, by the way, complete with uh, dimple primers. And you can see the magazine is actually somewhat short front to back and the big chunky bit on the bottom is a base plate. So obviously we don't have a gun like this in the collection, but a relatively recent acquisition for us is this B&T APC-9, which does have a very deep magazine well, but it is in fact solid all the way around and is designed to take a nine millimeter magazine. So this is one of the closest things we would have to this. This gun has sci-fi thumbhole stock syndrome, which is not ideal for, for most purposes. You'll see thumbhole stocks on precision rifles some of the time. Having a, a, a rigid stock is more important than being able to quickly grasp the pistol grip. But it's a very quick way to make your gun look futuristic, I think. We've got a pilot down. The ejection on this is a bit crazy, so it's not very energetic. And as the weapon's counted over, magically the case ejection is kind of trickling off over to the left, whereas it should just, well, at that angle, it should be probably coming out vertically. You need a lot of force behind case ejection, otherwise the gun will tend to stop. Um, so it's, it's kind of odd that the pattern of ejection is changing that drastically just from tilting the weapon over because it instead of going out straight to the side or at an angle to the side it should just be going out like that these are the kind of silly details that i tend <laughs> to notice now normally if i if i'm talking about mech weaponry stuff that's you know massive and carried by some sort of armored suit or robot or something it's pretty difficult because although we do have that sort of stuff in the collection or at least vehicle and aircraft parallels to it and i can't really show you those very easily however i can show you this <laughs> this is a soviet era ags 17 it is semi-automatic, just like the cannon in this. It's not dissimilar in profile. This is obviously a lot smaller than the, the gun depicted. It fires 30 millimeter grenades. They don't look quite like the, the big 40 mil artillery rounds on this thing, but hey, this is the biggest thing I can possibly hold up for you in front of the camera. Um, and it, it's it's pretty cool. It has a sort of ripcord cocking system on the back there, and then a firing plate for the thumbs and it chugs away at a low rate of fire and a significant arc. It, it's a direct fire weapon as we see in the game here, but it's also used at extreme angles of elevation. Now we also have a bit on the feed side of things as well, because this is belt fed. Uh, I definitely can't hold up both of these attached to each other, but to the right side of the gun I was just holding clips this and it is a, a belt box. These are drill rounds, these are solid brass, but they show you the, the sort of size and shape of 30 millimeter grenade rounds that this thing actually fires. So we have a length of this. This isn't even full, this would be tremendously heavy, but this is a crew served weapon. What's missing is the tripod. So we don't have a giant mech suit, um, <laughs> but we do have the tripod that this clips onto. So I thought you might find that fun. I know I did. I don't know if I'm being trolled here, but um, EM4 and the words Cold War 
and the general bullpuppiness of this thing make me think someone someone riffing on the EM2 I can't help but recognize the general shape of the of the carrying handle sight rail as being pretty similar to the real one on the EM2 albeit much bigger but it's very far removed from from the real EM2 let's have a look at it Well, I couldn't resist. I had to go and get the gun I'm thinking of. So although I have a load of EMTs behind me, they're not equipped with this variant carry handle that has, well, it's bigger and squarer, a bit like the one on, on this gun. And it has this adjustment um, drum on the rear. So this is, this is what I'm thinking of without this three and a half power uh, sniper scope that's on this particular gun that plus plus the bullpup shape and the name perhaps the developers can let us know is there any inspiration or is it just a sheer coincidence i have to believe that there's some some inspiration there this is nice to see so we have we have shared weapons technology between the two games um, or two franchises uh, Titan, Titanfall and Apex Legends as I'm sure a lot of you are aware clear relationship between the two barreled version which has a real world parallel believe it or not in the uh, Korobov design from the Cold War era in the Soviet Union but it's nice to see the 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 consistent design aesthetics of these two two barrel versus three barrel and in this fictional universe got the option you can fire two shots at once you can fire three the obvious downside even of a two barrel system is weight weight and bulk inevitably we've effectively welded two guns together you know in the real world we have product ranges that do different things and fulfill different roles military law enforcement civilian and game universes like this are developing their own with their own fictional manufacturers and their own classes of weapon loosely based on reality and then their own types as well and perhaps change over time as well. It's, it's fascinating to follow um, doing what I do. Another shared universe gun here. We've got, um, there's a V47 and a VK47 and they are different in-game models. The, they almost look like one's improved from the other. I think that's probably the idea, but the overall configuration is, well, it's take an AKM, chop it into bits and stick it back together without reference to a photograph and you have you have these that's a bit unfair it's, it's quite a cool design the thing i remember from looking at the other version of it was the selector now this is not a, a bullpup akm which is pretty much what these guys are this is the somewhat well known although only if you're into this stuff <laughs> grozer um which is a 9 by 39 caliber short barrel rifle effectively assault rifle with a grenade launcher integrated into the system as well you can still see the aspects of the akm as you can on this gun so we still have a, an akm slash ak-74 style top cover here because the gas system under here is basically the same as the ak there's an ak style pistol grip whereas the uh, gp30 grenade launcher that this is based on has a little stubby one to get it out of the way as a rifle under barrel launcher this has got the full-size ak-74 rifle pistol grip funnily enough the in-game gun has a thumb hole stock arrangement so it doesn't have that bit of ak recognition but there's enough going on with the two handguards that are obviously wood or brown plastic that makes your brain think ak there is a gas tube type thing visible the top cover at the back as on the grozer is recognizably ak i think and the selector thing at the back so safety selector is very okay as well on this but as i remember from last time for some reason on this fictional gun it is upside down and back to front it's pretty it's actually pretty far removed from ak but there are enough vestigial remains to make you think this is a bit like a kalashnikov right we've got another nice side-by-side -side comparison of the two variants here every detail is actually different so it's been sort of retcon reimagined as well as also being upgraded. The Apex Legends version just looks more futuristic to me.
Right. Well, I think if you're going to do super sci-fi LMG, that's probably the way to do it. It's significantly different than, it's not just like a mini-me in space. It's very compact. It's got some bizarre heat-based reloading effectively reloading system so it's like an energy weapon that relies on overheating to constrain your effective rate of fire and then you're sort of fixing it when it, it as and when it overheats so if you can manage the heat successfully but like with an old-fashioned fps turret weapon or something good example of the niche of an lmg in sort of fps language but really isn't anything like what we have today um sometimes it's nice to have futuristic riffs on what you know but i tend to in general terms, to prefer something completely different if we're looking at a far future setting. Very, very chunky construction, which you'd expect for something that has to be carried by a giant robot, essentially. I like the detailing on it, though. Uh, the <laughs> warning labels are always fun. So we've got sort of hazard tape, caution. It's funny that there's a warning saying stay back 20 meters, and yet the case ejection is basically straight up. So you can stay back 20 meters all you like, but they're going to be landing on your head. If your vehicle, essentially this is a vehicle, has to just go through the motions of operating and loading a gun like a normal person, that's a bit redundant. Um, on the plus side, it means they can pick up any weapon on the battlefield and in the sort of ecosystem of Titanfall, we know that there are weapons lying around that you could pick up and use. However, from what I remember playing the game, that doesn't factor in. You are stuck with the weapon that you equip. It, it fits with the whole, the mech is a character in its own right thing for them to pick up and use weapons. But it, it's problematic in practical terms. But why am I talking about practicality when we're talking about bipedal armoured fighting machines? Hmm. <laughs> so I was, I was going to comment on the fact that this thing's called the MGL and is a sort of infantry grenade launcher like the Milcor MGL is, um, but, the, but they're completely different. They're actually not so different because although it's got a, a box and a belt, belt appears to be a fixed loop. And so the rounds are, are, are being fired and then the, I still call it a belt, but it's acting more like a cylinder, is rotating within the box. So really taking advantage of the setting, we have the, the grenades, for, I assume they're 40 millimeter, I'm not sure. And they will bounce off human players, pilots or whatever, still explode and do damage but it's very clear that they are also being magnetically attracted to metallic enemies. <laughs> so, and therefore they're gonna do more, more focused damage because they're stuck to them. Good way to change things up. It's, a, it's, it's recognizable, it's intuitive, you know how to use it. And you get the cool factor of a rotary grenade launcher, uh, but then you get something additional as well. It is, it's a sci-fi Gatling gun, what can I say? There's a slightly weird charge up style alt attack where it's, sort of, it's like a one powerful shot instead of the normal Gatling slash chain gun burst of fire or continuous burst of fire where it looks like all the barrels are firing at once. If, if this works like a Gatling gun, which it appears to, then it's a rotating breach system um, where you can only ever fire one barrel after the other. Um, you would not be able to fire them all at once because they're not all chambered at once. But hey, this is the future, so um, you have that other option. The distinctive thing about the this this R series, as it turns out, there's a, a series of these assault rifles. The distinctive design feature is that very raked forward magazine housing and very long magazine housing which I suspect, I've probably mentioned before, is inspired by the Chris Vector. Um, otherwise, it's very much the same as, as the other one. <laughs> uh, it's not a bad thing. I might have swapped them around and had the more sort of scar looking conventional, what, what is it? What is the SMG? I might have swapped that around and had the, the R series guns be the SMGs, but who cares? Um, they do, they fit the niches for, uh, absolutely fine. One's one sort of pistol caliber, one is like assault rifle caliber. More than any other Titan weapon that I, I remember or have seen in, in this footage, this thing really comes off as a handheld artillery piece with the way the breach opens and the, 
the empty case comes punting out the back of the gun. Or effect wise, it's pretty unusual. Um, it's not quite a gun and it's not quite a flamethrower and it's using, um, I'm sure you know, this, this real world compound thermite. And so it's got a shell and when it lands the, the content, it burns whatever it's sat on. And I'm sure you've seen, you, like me, you've probably watched videos of thermite burning through engine blocks and stuff. It's it's seriously impressive, slightly scary stuff. So I like the idea of using it as a, as a game weapon like this. So it's, it's sort of flamethrower adjacent, but is much more gun-like. I always like the idea of the smart pistol, I think because of Fifth Element with the, the Zorg ZF-1 and the idea of picking a target and wherever you shoot, all of your shots go to it. I think my only reservation I had with it was and is the fact that it's a pistol. Like if the pistol can do that, why can't any of the other small arms do it? Because the real estate, as it were, on a on a handgun for building in that kind of technology is way less than on a rifle or something. So, and I know the I know the answer. It's a gameplay. It's a very cool idea, and it is a different style of gameplay. And I guess the fact that it's a pistol fits with the whole wall running parkour aspect of being a pilot. Design wise, it's fairly conventional. It, it sort of looks a bit like a slightly space age race gun. I suppose it's like wall running John Wick. <laughs> when you use the smart pistol. There's more variety to the Titan weapons than I remember in this game. This looks like a rotary grenade launcher like the, like the MGL. Functions similarly as well, but um, three barrels. So I assume that the like three rounds in, in the drum are aligning and firing at the same time. The curvature would seem to not match up with the three flat barrels, but it must do. But it's not a grenade launcher. It's um, solid shot, essentially. So it's like a, I mean, there are rotary, as we know, there are rotary shotguns as well. And if you load those with slug, then you'd have something similar to this, only make it 10 times bigger and find a robot suit. Those were the guns of Titanfall 2. Hope you enjoyed those. Um, always interested in that in that franchise in that world i hope you'll join us over on the royal armory's youtube channel if you haven't already we have some interesting stuff going on over there not just firearms so there's quite a lot of that as well uh, various um, social media outlets um, attached to us as well and of course our three museums if you're able to come and visit us please do but we will see you either way next time here on this channel